And in the color game, all the red ones go here, all the blue ones go here, right? Yeah. Graylin is three. So can you point and show me where the blue ones go? Yeah, perfect. Where do the red ones go? Perfect. The cards can be sorted either by shape or by color. Graylin's first learning the color game. Thank you. Okay, she, she has to match up the cards with the color of the objects. And now she's going to do the shape game, where she has to match them to the shapes. Can you show me where the stars go? Yay. Where do the trucks go? Oh, excellent. So now they won't be red or blue, so she can only match by shape in the card. Okay. See? It's a yellow star. Okay. This is training. So remember, stars go here and trucks go here. Here's a truck. Where are you going to put that? Okay, so now she's done color okay. and she's done shape. She's no problem with either. Can you point and show me where the trucks go? Good job. Where do the stars go? Good job. Here's a truck. Where are you going to put that? Now that was a blue truck. Huh? Yes. So now it's the testing. So now she's got the conflict. In the shape game, the color doesn't count. And Graylin has learned the game well. Can you point and show me where the stars go? Excellent. Where do the trucks go? Yeah. Here is a star. Where are you going to put that? So remember, all the stars go in this box and all the trucks go in this Notice box. on every trial, either the experimenter restates the rules or the child answers where restating the rules. Where the stars go? Good girl. What about the trucks? Where do they go? She's learning, in a way, to ignore the color during this part. Of yes. And then she's got to undo that. You know what we're going to do now, Graylin? Now we are going to play the color game again, all right? Now remember, in the color game, blue ones go here and red ones go here. Can you show me where the red ones go? Where did the blue ones go? Excellent. Here's a blue one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, remember, red ones go here and blue ones go here. Here's a red one. Where does that go? Have a look and show me where the blue ones go. Excellent. Where do the red ones go? Excellent. Here's a red one. Where does that go? Wow. <laughs> where do the blue ones go? Where do the red ones go? Here's right. a red one. Star. <laughs> right. That's, right. That's really remarkable. What, what I think is happening is before the child sees the card, the child has clearly in mind what the rules are and what she's supposed to do. She knows that red goes here and blue goes there. She's got it. Then she sees this card that's relevant to both dimensions in incompatible ways. And it, that creates a problem for her. Here's a red one. What we call this is attentional inertia. They can't get their attention off of what had been relevant before. So what you start with seems to get dominance in right. some way. Just now, like why is that? Is it because it's been reinforced many times? I think times? so, yes. It's been, you know, you got used to doing those rules that way. The part of the brain that's good at sticking to the tried and true is down in the more primitive regions. In the adult brain, it's the prefrontal cortex that jumps in and overrules the ingrained response. And what is that? But in a three-year-old brain like Juliana's, the prefrontal cortex still isn't up to the job of switching her mind to the new set of rules. Can you point and show me where the stars go? Where do the stars go, Juliana? Adele Diamond has an idea she's testing here that if the child herself names the color or shape, it will help get her out of the rut. Flat. Where do trucks go? Before the experimenter said, this is a truck. Right. Now she's saying, what is it? And having the child say, this is a truck. That's the only difference. What color is that? Red. I think that it provides a verbal scaffold to help her move her attention. When, when she's named it as something else, I think that it helps her get over the hump of moving her attention to what's newly relevant now. That's what I think is happening. So this is the adult version of the child card sort that you just saw, and it's computerized. Well, so here's the inevitable moment where my prefrontal cortex is going to be on public display. The bottom of the screen. Shape star. Wait a minute. The shape word tells me whether to respond star. to the shape or the color. Shape truck. Shape truck. Shape star. Shape truck. So far, so good. When they're all shapes, my frontal lobes have it easy. Blue. When the rule changes, things get trickier. 
Color truck. Ah! Color red. Color star. Nope. Color blue. Color red. Color now the heat's really on. Sometimes the rule is color, sometimes it's shape. Color truck. Oh, color shape star. <laughs> Got his color red and uh, a shape <laughs> truck. Color red. Color truck. No, color the computer's been blue. measuring color my red. reaction time which in the mixed trial slowed drastically. I am all washed up. The children make the mistake at the level of accuracy. They actually get it wrong. Adults make the same kinds of mistakes, but now at the level of reaction time. We're slower to do the things that the children do wrong. Now, what is this telling us about what's happening in the brain? In an adult brain now, it's supposed to be totally developed. Just or maybe I'm on the downside again. I don't know. Um, the older part of the brain, the part of the brain that's involved with habit and doing what comes naturally, has, a lot, has had a lot more time to develop than prefrontal. So fragile prefrontal cortex can't always solve everything. It's hard to switch. It's hard to change what your system has gotten used to doing.